Elon is bracing for another round of winter weather. Forecasters are calling for more snow Tuesday night into Wednesday. Good evening, I'm Jason Puckett. And I'm Addie Haney. Phoenix 14 News has complete coverage on the forecast and the impact it could have on classes and fake break. Reporter Joe Bruno is live along Williamson Avenue and Grace Sweeney is in our weather center. We begin tonight with Grace Sweeney for a look at what we can expect. Grace? Well, there's no snow coming tonight or tomorrow. Today was partly cloudy with temps in the 40s. Tonight it will cool down into below freezing temperatures at around 40, 24 degrees. Tomorrow evening is when we'll probably see some rain and in the evening when it cools down, there's a possibility of snow. I'll give you all of the details coming up later on. Addie? Elon has already seen a fair amount of snow this winter season. Piedmont Triad International Airport reported 8.2 inches of snow in December, according to the National Weather Service. There were a total of five days with snow falling in December. For January, the National Weather Service is reporting a total of 1.4 inches of snow so far. With more snow possibly on the way, Phoenix 14's Joe Bruno found out who makes the decisions on canceling class and how they do it. Joe joins us live from along Williamson Avenue with more. Joe, what did you find out? For Elon students, snow and, snow and ice could lead to more to delays. This work and the fate of Elon snow removal is up to groundskeeping director Tom Flood and his crew. Well, we typically start watching the snowstorms long before um, a lot of other folks do. The crew at the physical plant is watching the weather and prepping as early as 48 hours before a snowstorm hits. Uh, typically 48 hours before we're due for a potential snowfall, we go back through all of our snow removal equipment and double check everything. Once all equipment is in check, the next step is for workers to lay down de-icer. Workers here at the physical plant typically apply de-icer the night before a storm is about to hit. However, this is only the beginning of Elon's established snow removal procedure. Flood begins his morning of snow days by checking with campus police chief Chuck Gantos about sidewalk and road conditions. By 5.30 a.m., Chief Gantos speaks with the provost to determine whether school will be operating on a normal schedule. And then Flood and his crew get to work clearing the snow. If a decision is made to cancel or delay class, students can check the website at 6 o'clock and also check their phones for a text message. Flood also encourages students to be careful while walking around campus and also to stay away from physical plant workers. Live along Williamson Avenue, Joe Bruno, Phoenix 14 News tonight. Education majors are required to student teach in local public schools. They follow the school's schedule when dealing with bad weather. When the school gets a snow day, the student teachers get off too, but they also have to make them up on Saturdays or over breaks, even if the snow day happened before they started student teaching. We met with Special Education Program Coordinator Stephen Bird to find out more. They're going to have to go on that makeup day Saturday or on that extra day over spring break, but you know they didn't actually miss the day because yeah. it wasn't in, it, they weren't actually here in January. So the answer actually to your question is yes, they're going to have to pay. There may not be snow on the ground yet, but there's one group of people who are ready for it to come. Nick Oxner takes us to the NCDOT compound in Alamance County, where crews are preparing to battle the next wave of winter weather. At this point, the crews here at the NCDOT in Graham are used to doing battle with Mother Nature on Alamance County's public roads. You get tired of seeing snow, not necessarily just tired, tired of seeing snow. But as snow falls around parts of North Carolina and forecasters warn the triad to brace for more white flakes, a line of orange salt trucks lines up to receive their ammunition. Boys, I have approximately uh, 35. Uh, we use seven additional contractor trucks, and then I have approximately 15 additional motor grader contractors that I use. The salt trucks are the second wave of troops against the snow and ice, hitting the road soon after the snow begins to fall. These are our brine trucks. This is what we use to help put, out of our, help put our brine out. Um, That's the white streaks you see on area roads. It's designed to prevent ice from sticking to the roadways. By the time it's all said and done, the crews in Graham will have gone through more salt in a month than you'll use in a lifetime. Right, so we 800 tons or so for the storms that we have already. Um, we do expect this storm to have some significant need for salt. <laughs> but it's all necessary for a frontline fight that's keeping people safe. We're going to clean the roads. They're going to be safe for the drivers to get out on. That's going to happen regardless. 
DOT officials ask drivers to stay off the roads once it starts to really snow and the roads become covered with snow and ice. She says the more cars that are on the road, the harder it is to plow, especially on the interstate. Continuing coverage of tonight's Elon alum Mark Mercer, who is accused of having sex with a two 14-year-old students at Jefferson Middle School in Winston-Salem. Mercer was a math teacher at the school. Tonight, reporter David Hodges takes a look at Mercer's final year at Elon, where friends say they noticed a change in his behavior. David joins us now in the studio with more. Mark Mercer is facing 29 charges of statutory rape and other offenses in Forsyth County. But what about his history here at Elon? His former roommate says that Mercer began to act differently his senior year. He began um, acting out more. He was drinking more excessively and um, having several different partners. Koontz lived with Mercer in the Oaks Apartments and said that Mercer broke up with his girlfriend a few months before his senior year. After that, he remembers Mercer bringing back freshman girls several nights a week. Kuntz was also a teaching fellow. He remembers Mercer being creative and using music to help interest students in math. He doesn't believe that Mercer used his teaching methods to attract his students, but just thinks he mixed his personal life with his professional one. I think that he was living alone, he was in a new place, he didn't have many friends, he didn't have a strong support system, and his professionalism just broke down. Um, his need for female attention on a physical and emotional level a Forsyth County parent says Mercer sent nearly a thousand text messages to their daughter, a student at Jefferson. Kuntz says Mercer texted constantly. The allegation of a thousand text messages to a girl is completely believable to me. Mercer was a student teacher at Western Alamance High School in 2008 and 2009, his senior year. Director of University Relations Dan Anderson says Elon University certified that Mercer completed his education and student teaching assignment in order to receive his teaching license. Both are required in order to graduate. Phoenix 14 contacted former Western Alamance principal Terry Spears and asked if there were ever any incidents with Mercer when he taught there. Spears said she had no comment. Mercer's next appearance in court is in August. On the Crime Watch tonight, an Elon student is facing assault charges after an early morning incident on campus. Campus police records show police were called to Coakley Residence Hall after a female student reported being assaulted. Police say they have not made an arrest in the case yet. Robin Stansfield Ragsdale will be back in court tomorrow. Ragsdale is accused of hitting an Elon student in October as he rode his bike to campus. Police say that the victim, Turiali Fosley, was left injured on the side of the road after Ragsdale drove away. This recent hit and run comes after Ragsdale was convicted in 2008 of hitting and killing four people along University Drive. Phoenix 14 News will continue to follow this story and have more for you after Ragsdale's court appearance tomorrow on our website at phoenix14news.wordpress.com. Some say the world will end in 2012 with the Mayan calendar, but a movement of Christians are spreading the word that there won't even be a 2012. Sam Baranowski has the story. Spring means baseball season and warmer weather to most Americans, but to Allison Warden, it brings a disastrous earthquake and bodies rising from their graves. It's, it's literally the beginning of Judgment Day. Warden moved to rally to warn people of the end of days, which the math of controversial Christian leader Harold Camping tells her is May 21st this year. She's part of a movement spreading word that all who believe will go to heaven, while the rest face five months of torment. So it is going to be a very devastating realization that people are going to know the Bible was true and that salvation isn't possible no matter how bad you want it now. Her car speaks volumes, but she's got another roadside service to spread the word. She pays for hundreds of billboards like these across the country. I realize you can't badger or debate someone into your point of view, and so I tell people I'm not, that's not what is, you know, what we're attempting to do. We're attempting to give people the opportunity that are interested to look into it. So what happens if May 22nd comes? Lynn Huber is a religious studies professor and scholar of apocalypticism. She says date-setting religious groups have been let down by these predictions many times in the past. It just, it continues. And people are, you know, fascinated with that. I mean, people seem to want some sort of certainty. I don't really think about what if it doesn't happen because I know that it's going to happen. 
Sam Baranowski, Phoenix 14 News tonight. There's more to come on Phoenix 14 News. Starbucks is rolling out a big addition to its menu. We'll have a look at just how big after the break. It's going to snow, is it going to rain, or both? I'll have your full weather forecast coming up next.